Melissa Daglow was happy as she walked into her house and she called out for James, her husband, to come to the living room for she wanted to share something with him. The woman who works hard for her money was so excited to share the news of her promotion, she even came home early from work. Mal could not wait to see her husband's reaction to the news, for he was so supportive of her. James responded from the bedroom that he would be down in a moment. Melissa did not want to wait to share the great news, so she went upstairs to join him. When Melissa opened the door and saw James dressed in a pink satin pussy bell blouse and a blue A-line skirt which came down to his mid-thigh, she saw he was having Jane time. Unexpectedly seeing her husband dressed as Jane took away some of her happiness. She was happy for James that he expressed his feminine side, Jane, but wanted to know when he was doing so. That was so she could be in the right frame of mind. Melissa mentioned to James about her issue of not knowing about his Jane time, and they agreed she should be informed. James, in a loving manner, told the wonderful Ms. Daglow the agreement was for only when they were both home. She came home early and he was in the process of changing back to his drab James clothes. If he knew that she was coming home early, he would not have been dressed how he was. Melissa understood where James was coming from but still felt like he was dressing behind her back. She expressed that concern. James saw her point of view and told his wife he will be better at doing so when he planned to have Jane time but if it was a spur-of-the-moment action like today, then he would not call her if she is not home. Melissa said that he should always tell her. James countered with Melissa should always tell him when she is coming home early. If he had to inform her on something as mundane as what he is wearing, then she should also have to tell him when she would be home. Melissa said she should not have to tell her husband when she was coming to her home. James did not want to fight and agreed with her. He then added the same should be true about what he does. Neither of them should have to tell the other about every little thing they do. Melissa also did not want to fight, she was just a little unprepared to see Jane. She felt like it would take away from sharing the news with him. She told James to come downstairs as soon as he was changed for she had big news to share with him. James hurried up and got changed and ran downstairs. Just hearing his Melly Mel had big news got him excited. He knew it was always good news when his wife said she has big news. He loved her good news for it makes her already loving attitude towards him even more so. James arrived in the living room and stood there waiting for the news. She told him to sit down and he did. James did not want to sit for he knew as soon as he heard whatever Melissa had to tell him he would get right back up and hug her. After James was sitting down Melissa told him about the big promotion she got at work. She went on and said the ridiculous job title of Director of Data Collection, Input and Output of the Northeast was hers, and they both laughed. She was now manager of all the market survey groups in that section of the country. James got up and opened his arms to hug her. When she got into his arms he lifted her up and told her how proud he was of her. He was, she set a goal and met it. This promotion came earlier than he expected. He did not have any special plans to celebrate. James loved planning little surprises for his wife. James did say they would need to celebrate tonight and Melissa asked where. James said, as always, the wife decides. Melissa loved that James almost always deferred where they went on date night or to celebrate an event. He told his wife he did so for as the husband, anywhere his wife wants to be is where he wants to be. It made her feel special. The few times when James did pick where they were going on date night were for his birthday or else if he planned a special evening for his wife. If James did plan a special evening, he always made sure the restaurant they went to was one of her favorites. Melissa picked the local Indian restaurant, she was in the mood for a nice, hot and spicy curry. James asked her if she wanted to get dressed up for the occasion and suggested that they go dancing afterwards. Melissa said, yes. James was happy for not only did he get to take his wife out on the town, he gets to see her dress to impress. He did find her beautiful but he also enjoyed to see a great outfit. He just loved women fashion styles. What women wore were more fun, more alive and have so much more variety compared to men's clothing. They enjoyed a great night out, Melissa even paid for it. She insisted, for with her promotion came a huge pay raise, she now made more than James at his head writer job for a video game company. 
Melissa even joked about being the breadwinner of the family now. That joke did not hurt Jane's pride in the least for he was always more concerned about happiness than money. The next day after finishing his honey-do list, James went and started to transform into Jane while Melissa went shopping with some of her friends. After his nice bubble bath, he looked in his wardrobe and went with his sleeveless pink cocktail dress. He enjoyed the fact it was loose-fitting below the waistline for how it flowed as he walked. He looked in the mirror to check his makeup and confirmed his earrings went with his outfit. He was happy with his look and felt totally like Jane. As Jane was in the kitchen preparing the Alfredo sauce for tonight's dinner, Melissa came home and informed her husband there has been a change of plans. Melissa's friend, Deanna, asked her if she and James would like to hang out at the local bar tonight. Melissa said yes for James got along well with Jason, Deanna's husband. That was no surprise, James got along with everyone. Jane said, no problem dear, I will change to go out, but first, just let me finish the Alfredo sauce and I will make that for dinner tomorrow. Melissa said whatever you have on is fine dear. Jane replied no for it was he was wearing that pink cocktail dress which he had been dying for an occasion to wear. Melissa's promotion at work was the perfect occasion in Jane's eye. Jane's being dressed as Jane made Melissa a little upset for James had some Jane time yesterday. She assumed her husband was not going to have his scheduled Jane time for Saturday. Melissa sighed, Jane, you had that time yesterday. I want to go out tonight. Jane assured her wife, I just need to change it is no big deal. It takes a lot less time to change into James than it does to change into Jane. Melissa reiterated, Jane you had that time yesterday. Melissa, my love, no need to repeat yourself. We agreed to me having this time today. It irritated Jane some that Melissa was giving her a little attitude about something which was so important to her. Having Jane time helped James be his wonderful self. He could not explain why, but it reduced his stress. Jane went upstairs and a half hour later, James came down. He grabbed the book he had been reading and sat in the reclining chair. Melissa asked him why he did not join her on the couch. James told her because he wanted to read a little before they went out. Melissa kept on interrupting him while he was reading. Bringing up shopping, how much fun karaoke at the local watering hole was going to be, and how they can just stay in bed late tomorrow. It was a one-way conversation for James just gave short responses to her questions and did not chip in any of his thoughts. James got back to reading when Melissa asked if he wanted something to drink. James put down his book, took off his reading glasses, glared at his wife and told her, I want to be left alone to read my book before we head out for the night. Melissa told James not to be snippy with her just because he was not getting Jane time tonight, he had it yesterday. She wanted to go out with her husband and a couple of friends to celebrate her promotion. James said it was not about him not getting Jane time, it was about him relaxing. He felt relaxed as Jane and if he got enough Jane time he was good for a while. He had it planned, and she changed it without consulting him, he did not get his stress release. He had a stressful week at work. He had to let go one of his staff for they were underperforming. The script for the upcoming game had to be changed at the last moment, management decided they wanted to go for an older audience. He just needed to relax and being feminine did that for him. Melissa told James, you have it so easy as a man. I always have to be better than all the men all the time at the office just so I get mentioned in the conversations about promotions. I get judged by my looks all the time, you do not have to worry about people doing that to you. Honey you should not think it is easy to be a woman. James told his Melly Mel, I do not think it is easy to be a woman. It is just touching into my feminine side makes me feel so relaxed. Mel said, that should not be, you should try to be the woman in the relationship. James being sick of having the same conversation when Mel was not happy with his Jane time said, fine. Melissa was irked that the love of her life gave her such a short answer to try to make a point to James she made a challenge, fine, I will be the husband and you will be the wife if you are up to it. James quickly said yes. Melissa did not expect James to accept the dare and was now trying to find a way out of it. Are you sure? James got out of the chair and joined her on the couch. He held her hands and told her, Yes, I am sure. You think that I am taking being a woman for granted. 
I do not. I have a couple of conditions. We actually switch roles in the relationship. You do everything which I normally do and I will do all you normally do. I do not want this to be one-sided or a farce. We keep this light-hearted, I do not want it to be a competition. Either one of us can back out of this at any time. Lastly, neither of us try to use this as making a point of which gender has it harder. I already know that females do. Melissa was happy to hear James's response and said, Honey, that came out wrong. I know that you do not think that being a woman is easy. We do not have to switch roles. James knew that her understanding will only be temporary and saw this as a way to make her better understand his cross-dressing. James, in a gentle manner, stood his ground. I think we should so we both have a better understanding of what the other brings to the relationship and see the dynamics of the wonderful life they have from the other person's point of view. Half-heartedly, Melissa agreed. She did not want to back down for she knew that James would bring it up if she ever mentioned not liking Jane time. It was not that she wanted an issue to fight over, it was she wanted the option to bring up her husband's hobby if it was bothering her. Melissa saw James cross-dressing as a hobby, but him being able to wear a dress and embrace his feminine side was so much more important to her husband. The reason Jane time was important was James had always used the release of dressing even when he was young. His parents were open-minded and encouraged their children to express themselves how they wished. They believed that allowing their children to be who they were would make them good people. James was the outliner of their children, he did not fit into many of the traditional mailboxes growing up. When he was a toddler, James did play with trucks and army men, but he was more likely to play with dolls or want to have tea time. He would even say he wanted to be a mommy when he got married to a woman. He also loved being in the kitchen when his mom was cooking. He would offer to help and as soon as he was old enough they allowed him then, when James did fit into those traditional mailboxes, he did not fit into them in the normal manner other boys did. He was athletic and played football, basketball, and was on the swim team. Being on the swim team had the added bonus of no one questioning his shaven legs. Unlike his teammates, James was more concerned about everyone doing their best instead of winning. He would much rather have given his all and lose than win without doing so. Growing up James was a protector. He would defend those who were being bullied and picked on. What made him different from other boys who did the same was the curiosity with which he did so. He was like a mama bear protecting her cubs. How James fit into the traditional female boxes was so natural no one noticed it. They did not say he was sensitive, he was passionate. People thought his aptitude in writing did not come from him being in touch with his emotions, it came from he being well articulated. After coming home from a great night out together, Melissa, trying to find a way to back out gracefully, asked again if James wanted to do this role reversal. She said it was not needed. Again, James disagreed with her. He brought up that if they did this, then Melissa might give him more slack when he needed to be Jane. James quickly added that he was grateful of how supportive his loving wife was of Jane. Melissa said it is not James having Jane time which gets to her as much as the effects of having the time. They had to pause their life. That she liked them to always be free to do spur-of-the-moment things. James told Melly he understood how impulsive Melly can be and loved her for it. He said that is why he would forego or end his Jane time when she brought up something she wanted to do. Mel admitted that it was mostly that sometimes she felt like James did not see the big picture of being a woman. If he did, he would not find it relaxing. It was wrong of her, for his letting Jane out was harmless. She did not want to say it, for she could live with him dressing, and knew he means no harm in doing so. It was settled in James' eyes. He was going to be the wife for the weak. He did not want Melissa to have resentment to a part of his essence. He loved her and wanted to show her that he was just being himself when he was Jane. Melissa laughed when she saw how stubborn James was being about having the switch. She knew that he would not back down. Mel also thought it might stop him from dressing as much for he would associate the dredge of being a woman with dressing also. On top of the conditions which James wanted earlier, they did lay down some ground rules. James will be dressed as Jane as much as possible for the week. That was no issue for James for he went out as Jane all the time. 
They would both bring up anything which they thought the other was not doing towards filling their new role. They would have a talk at the end of week about what they experienced. They both felt better after laying down the ground rules. James was happy that he was going to be able to show to Melissa he was not taking being a woman lightly. Melissa was happy that James wanted to reassure her. It was now Sunday and James and Melissa started the week of role reversal. The start of the morning went without any issues. They both joked with Jane calling Mel her husband and Mel calling Jane her wife. Jane beat Mel in making the offer to get coffee. Mel tried to say she would get it. Jane would not have it, for normally Mel got the coffee, so now Jane will be doing so. Jane left the room and Mel thought it is nice to be waited on. She knew James did wait on her, but never made the offer to get her something. Mel always had to ask or it had to be part of their routine. When Jane returned with the coffee Mel thanked her and asked her wife why she never did that as Jane before. Jane smiled and said for she never was Jane at this time of the day. She then went on to say it felt good offering and getting coffee for her husband. Mel was having a lazy Sunday morning while Jane was floating around the house doing small chores. Jane did not care for she knew that she would have rest time while Mel mowed the lawn. Mel was reading the Sunday paper when Jane called out to her to get into the kitchen. She got up and went to see what her wife wanted. She arrived in the kitchen and Jane told Mel there was a spider. Mel jumped and asked Jane why she called her for a spider. Jane said for you have to deal with it now. Mel did not like spiders one bit, they gave her the creeps. Mel said that she will not deal with the spider, that was something Jane did. Jane corrected her and said, no, that was what James did. I am the wife now and you are the husband, so you have to deal with the creepy crawlies. Mel did not like getting the spider out of the house until Jane thanked her. The smile on her wife's face made the new husband get all warm inside. That smile made Mel feeling on Grenchy from dealing with the spider Melissa asked if it was going to be every little thing and Jane said, yes. I tidied up the kitchen and did a load of laundry while you read the paper. Just like later you will cut the grass while I read the paper. Mel inquisitively said to Jane, cut the grass? Jane responded, yes, cut the grass. It needs to be mowed, and James always did it in on Sunday morning. I thought that you were relaxing before you started your chores as the husband. Mel said, oh, we did not agree to this. Jane disagreed. Oh yes we did. I clearly stated that we would take on the role of the other for this week. Do you really think that I am going to do everything you do to help out around the house and also what I usually did? With Mel just relaxing and not trying to stop her wife from doing her chores she knew exactly how not wanting to mow the lawn looked. Dear, I was not trying to have you do everything, you know me better than that. I just know I will hate to cut the lawn, so I thought that maybe I could do the shopping and you cut the grass. Jane said, this is about understanding what each other bring to the relationship and also so I can experience being the woman for you think that I do not take it seriously. I hate spiders yet I deal with them for you. They give me the creeps, just like anything with more than six legs do. My skin crawls just thinking of them, but I deal with them as the husband. Mel felt bad hearing about how Jane does not like spiders. She always called her when she was James to get them. She told Jane she would not do that anymore. Jane said that she will keep on doing it for she knew how much his Melly Mel was grateful for him to do so. It was just not going to happen this week. Some good did come out of their talk. It made Mel feel better about cutting the grass. Jane was taking this seriously and her points about not liking spiders helped Mel see this would help them both better understand and appreciate each other. She smiled for she realized it was a learning experience for both of them, not just Jane. As they started to talk, Mel got a break, it started to pour down rain. It kept on for a couple of hours so she did not have to mow the lawn. It was Monday morning and Mel woke up to start her day. She went to go into the master bathroom and saw the door was closed. She heard the shower running. Why was James taking a shower in there? He knew that she used that bathroom to get ready for the day. She asked James what he was doing and if he could hurry up. Jane replied she was getting ready for the day and the wife got to use the master bathroom in the morning. 
Mel was not happy with that little joke and told James to get out of there right now, she did not want to be late on her first day with her new job. Jane opened the door and stuck her head out. Mel dear, you use the other bathroom. I am Jane and the wife for the week, and I need to get ready for work. I am going to have to apply my makeup. Mel was mad. James is taking this way too far and went to go into the bathroom. Jane told her to stop. Mel said, quit trying to be cute and make whatever point you are trying to make. I need to get ready and I want to use this bathroom. You are not going to work dressed as Jane. Jane was planning on going to work dressed as herself. Her workplace was liberal and had a great policy on what people were allowed to wear. Everyone in the office knew about Jane and a couple of them asked if James was ever going to come in as her. Mel knew all of this, but never thought that James would actually do so. Jane told Mel she was going to dress as Jane all this week for that was what they agreed on. That she wanted to show her wife that she could handle being a female. That she was sick of the love of her life always saying that it was not easy being a female when Jane already knew that. Jane told Mel she wanted to show her that Jane could handle the bad with the good of being the wife, the female. Until right then Mel did not know how much that throwaway line annoyed Jane. She told Jane that she would use the other bathroom and would start to take this swap more seriously. While getting ready, Mel thought about if she was being too hard on James about dressing. In the back of her mind she always thought that one day he would just quit. She wanted to have children, and surely thought that James would quit then, wouldn't he? Thinking more about it, she thought why should he quit just because they have children? Him quitting for they had a child would somehow justify people thinking it was wrong. There is nothing wrong with her husband dressing how he wanted. She made it downstairs and went for the coffee maker. She saw nothing in the pot. Damn it! James makes the coffee, she thought. Jane just came into the kitchen looking all professional. Mel had no doubt that Jane would, but was impressed at her posture. Jane just looked together and more ready for work than James did. Mel told her wife she was sorry about no coffee this morning and would make it tomorrow. Jane smiled and said it was fine, it was Monday morning. She then kissed her husband on the cheek and told her, Go get them, tiger! Mel was a little surprised at how different Jane was acting. It was not that Jane was supportive, James was amazing at how encouraging he was for Mel to follow her dreams. It was just different, Jane was deferring to her. Mel actually felt like she was in the lead of the relationship. She did like it. Jane made it to work and she was a little shocked how big of a deal people made of it. They all knew that she dressed and the policy clearly stated the dress code was exactly the same for everyone. Before she made it to her office, Felix Hunter, the head of HR, called her into his office. He asked her what exactly she thought she was doing. Jane explained the swap and why. Felix was sympathetic and told Jane she should have informed HR of her plans. Jane stated that she did not have to for the what the policy clearly stated. Felix stated he knew about the policy but it could be a distraction for others. Jane told him then their supervisors would have to deal with it, it was not her issue if people are not professional enough to know that they should be working instead of gawking at something. Jane left the office with her opinion that the actions of HR was to justify their existence and to try to get out of doing any real work reinforced. Felix knew he had no right to tell her that she had to get permission to dress how she wanted. Felix also knew that he had to deal with any issue which comes from this. He should try to make sure work went smoothly but not by seeing an issue where there was not one. After dealing with most people's first reactions, the rest of the day went great. A couple of the girls asked her where she got her outfit, she was actually invited to join a group of them for lunch. She took that offer up right away. She made it home before Mel and even with it now being her husband's day to make supper, she started to prepare it. First she was in a great mood and wanted to do something small for her husband. She also felt a little bad about saying that Mel was not taking this seriously. Jane knew that Mel was, it is just Mel did not know the full ramifications of the swap. Mel came home and smelled the rich aroma of Jane's tomato sauce. The tired wife smiled for it was a long hard day at work. She had to start to play catch up with all the projects which her new teams were behind on. 
Mel got even happier when Jane walked in with a glass of red wine and offered it to her. As she sipped her wine, Mel thought that this needed to happen more often. Tuesday morning was easier for Mel. She got up and ran downstairs to turn on the coffee. On her way up to get ready she got a bright idea to splurge and buy one of those fancy coffee makers which have a timer built in. Jane would be all for it because she mentioned wanting one before. Plus, it would make James morning easier when they got back to their normal roles. Using the other bathroom to get ready for work was no big deal for the new husband. Mel could not believe that she actually got mad about that yesterday. The second day of leaving the house with her wife saying, go get them tiger, gave Melissa even more confidence than the day before. Those little words of encouragement fed her ego like a mama bird did to their hatchlings. Knowing the faith her spouse had in her helped Mel get ahead of the learning curve in her new job. Tuesday was not a great day at work for Jane. She felt that some of her male co-workers and subordinates were treating her as a joke. They were not, Jane was presenting herself as a female and some males always test how much they can get away with when presented a new female authority figure. ADD some even with having to deal with making sure people took her seriously, Jane's bad day at work was better than most of Jane's normal days. She felt more assured in her quick decisions, did not feel pressured about a couple of the projects being a behind schedule, and was more productive. Again Jane made it home before Mel and started supper so it was ready 20 minutes after she expected her husband home. Mel came home a half hour late with a coffee maker box in her hands. Seeing why Mel was late made Jane mad for two reasons. Her husband was inconsiderate by not calling when she knew that was going to be late. Secondly, as James, Jane brought up a couple of times to buy a new coffee maker with a timer and Mel said it could wait until the old one was broke. Jane said, what is that? It is a gift for my loving wife. You think a coffee maker is a gift? No. I was joking. I decided that you were right about getting a new coffee maker and picked it up. It is funny that you decided that after only one day of having to come downstairs to make the coffee. Well, you are going to be doing it again after this week, so it will help you way more than me. It is not going to help you at all. With it being a gift I am not going to open it until next week. Why are you starting a fight over me doing something nice for you? This is about you buying something we agreed not to without talking to me. You made a decision for us without my input. I would not have done it if I knew it was such a big deal. You made it a big deal when you told me in no uncertain terms I better not buy a coffee maker. If I had known you were going to make such a big deal about a coffee maker, I would not have bought it. It is not only that, you come home late. Supper has been ready for over 10 minutes now. So we get to what this is really about. Don't try to tell me what this is about. You know what? With you knowing what this is about, I am done talking about it. You already know the solution also then. Good then bring me a glass of wine. I am going into the living room to relax before we eat. Yes. Jane could not believe that her husband made a command about a glass of wine. It was really a request but was worded as well as a love poem from a 13-year-old boy. Mel should have been as clear as water from a spring about it being a request after the little tiff they had. Mel was so happy to get that glass of wine and to relax. Jane did have a point about the coffee maker, but that was not a big deal. Mel believed that she would not have made a big deal about James doing the same. That was about as true as the words of a pickup artist. When Mel finally made it to the dining room and saw that Jane was finishing eating she knew better than to ask why. It was not worth the energy to fight about her wife not waiting for her to eat. Supper was a time when they shared their day and Mel was going to miss that. The little disagreement about the coffee maker was way in the past as they went to bed. Jane believed that she got her point across about them being a team and needing to communicate the little things with each other. Mel on the other hand thought that Jane quit being childish about something small. Mel's misconception was reinforced when Jane thanked her for the coffee maker and told her it was set up for use tomorrow. Wednesday morning went a lot smoother for the couple on the internal spouse swap. It only added a couple of minutes, but not having to run downstairs to start the coffee made it feel like Mel had so much more time to get ready. Even with it taking more time to get ready, 
Jane liked how she presented herself at work. She did wonder if the novelty would wear off if she had to do so daily. Jane's day was just like her legs, mostly smooth except a few rough patches. She heard one of her co-workers, who she had to reprimand, refer to the new bitch in the office being a pain in the ass. The two other guys laughed until Jane approached them. She asked the man who could talk tough when not confronted what was the name of the new bitch. Of course, the alpha male did not answer. With it being Mel's day to cook supper when she got home, Jane decided to take a nice bubble bath and shave her legs. It felt so good to do this weekday indulgence for pleasure instead of stress relief. Just to sit and relax in a nice warm and soothing bath for no reasons other than to do so did more wonders for her soul than when it was a form of self-medication. While enjoying one of the simple things in life, Jane's phone rang. It was Mel. She was going to stay a little late for she was getting reports ready. If how they have been progressing on the backlog of work kept up, she would have her team back on schedule in a few weeks instead of a few months. Not wanting to lose her momentum, she left a quick message, in a zone, staying late, start supper. Jane came out of the bath feeling so relaxed and in the moment. It helped that she had her favorite lounging blouse on with the black skirts and flats. Her feeling at one with the now soon ended when she heard the message Mel left. Mel just gave another order to Jane and also did not talk about staying late. Mel came home looking forward to eating right away, she was in the mood for the pork chops. She came home and saw Jane sitting in the living room. Supper must be done and thought how lucky she was to have hers. That thought was soon to be gone. With being hungry Mel said, just serve up supper now, wife. Supper is not ready. I am hungry, so just serve it when it is finished. It is not even started. What? I called and asked you to cook supper tonight for I was staying at work late. No, you did not. You gave an order to start supper. Tonight is your night to cook. I asked. Listen to your message. Mel listened to her message. Okay, I did not formally ask. I was in the zone and did not want to break my concentration. You are being a baby about this. No, I am not. You did the same thing when you ordered me to get you a glass of wine last night. It is not too hard to say can you, dot. Okay. Can you make supper tonight? No, like I said, tonight is your night. You said when you were up for this promotion it would not impede on you doing your fair share around the house. Well, I might be doing less around the house with me bringing in more money now. What? Yeah, I will be bringing more money, so I should do less of the housework. Mel. We always divided the housework in half. When you were making less than I was all the way up to last week, you did not do more of the housework than me. Jane. I am just sorry. I thought you would be more supportive of me with this promotion. I am tired from putting in extra hours and expected supper to be done. I am supportive of you. You are acting like you take it for granted. Not talking to me about the coffee maker, ordering me around. Is that how you think a husband treats their wife? Is that how I treated you? I do not want to talk about the coffee maker again. I thought we covered you were making too much of a big deal over nothing. I am going to order Chinese for supper. What do you want? Don't change the subject. It is not about the coffee maker. It is about you changing your mind about it when you have to make the coffee and not talking to me about it. We are a couple and we made a decision about the coffee maker. I want the pork chops tonight. I do not want to have to throw them away for we did not cook them. Mel stopped herself for a second when she almost said that Jane could cook them tomorrow. Thursday was their date night during the week. Plus, she knew she was passing her responsibility off to her wife. I am sorry, we should have gotten the coffee maker when you brought up wanting one months ago. We just try to watch our money and I thought it would be frivolous. Also the next couple of weeks I might not ask directly but I mean it as a question. Bring it up when I do, but treat it as a question not a command. Give me a couple of minutes and I will start supper. How about I get you a glass of wine and I will start supper. Then when you finish the wine you come into the kitchen and help me in there. Mel smiled and hugged her wife. I love you and I am sorry. Jane said, I love you and I am sorry also. 
I guess it is a little hard for both of us to get used to these new roles, even if it is just for a week. As Mal sipped her wine she pondered the guess Jane made. She came to the conclusion she still was not treating this as serious as she should. Mel liked the positives of having the role of the husband, but was not embracing the negatives. It might just be for three more days, but Mel made a promise she was going to be as serious as her wife about it. Thursday went great for both Mel and Jane. Even with having the new coffee maker, Mel went down to make it. She wanted to see what exactly Jane did as James. It was not that much of a time saver, and could easily be built into a morning routine. She understood why James did not put up much resistance to her shooting down the idea of waiting to buy a new one. Their day at work for both was better than the day before. Even with more of the men being less friendly and more formal with Jane, she liked it. Mel was firing on all cylinders at work and it powered her team to do the same. These people she had underneath her were good workers. They just had very bad management before. Upper management at the Jane's place of work had noticed how much more assertive she was this week. Sid Carmack, founder and CEO, wondered if it would be wrong to ask James to come to work all the time as Jane. After mulling it over with his VP of development, Carla Molyneux, Sid was going to bring up the increased production from Jane's department. Jane was also liking her being more social at work. As Jane she was laid back but a little standoffish, now she had become a regular at lunch with a couple of the ladies. She quickly became part of their group, and next weekend was going to join them for drinks. When Tina Williams found out Jane stood up to a man calling her bitch, Jane was made part of the bitch club. To join the bitch club was simple for every member but Jane. The requirement was to call out a man for putting you down for being a woman. That night the new Miss Daglow felt so special when Mel told her that, as always, the wife decides. At that moment Mel understood why James would always defer to her choice she felt as warm as an autumn evening by how much Jane's face lit up hearing that. Jane picked a Mediterranean restaurant which was more known for being gay and trans-friendly than their food. Mel knew it was her wife being thoughtful of her being apprehensive about going anywhere new with Jane. With the original Ms. Daglow now taking the swap more seriously, she reiterated the fact they can go anywhere, and suggested that Mexican restaurant Jane loved. After making sure Mel was fine with it, Jane changed her mind as quick as NASCAR pit crew changed a tire and said, Casanero Dorado it is. A few of the diners did give the couple some looks. Most were aimed at how Jane was dressed, but a couple were at Mel. They both ignored the judgmental looks. Mel knew the looks were from the people who thought she could do better than being with a crossdresser. She cared as much about those looks as Amish people did about zippers. Those people did not know how much Jane loved her and she loved Jane. There was as much laughter coming from their table as if they were at a comedy club. The mood was even light and jovial when they talked about how the week was going. They both admitted that even with the rough parts, overall they enjoyed the role reversal. The couple was sending out feelers about how the other would feel about some changes in their marriage after this week was over. Friday started out great, Mel went to start the coffee and Jane informed her it was already set to brew. They spent the extra couple of minutes soaking in the remaining afterglow from how they finished last night. After basking in the light of their love, the two got ready for their day. The day at work went great for them again. Mel's team was getting more in sync. They were jelly now that they had a manager who was playing catch-up instead of cover-up. Jane was taken aback by the little impromptu meeting Mr. Carmack requested. She was flattered that he could tell how more productive her team was, and loved hearing the owner would like her to keep doing whatever changes she did to get it. She knew what he was hinting at. Some of the people on Mel's team were heading out for drinks after work and they invited her. Mel told them she would try to make it. She called her wife and asked if it was all right. The Daglos had no plans and Mel knew the answer before Jane said yes. Then after a couple of drinks became a couple more Mel made a wrong decision. It was an innocent one and she was joking, but it was still a bad choice. Mel called to say she was staying out a little later and taking a taxi home. Jane was more than happy her husband was bonding with her employees and said she would get a jump on her chores for tomorrow. Being on her phone Mel checked her Facebook and made what she thought was a cute post. Out with the girls and James is at home, where he belongs. 
If my house husband knows what is good for him, he better have the house tidy before I get home. To her it was just a harmless little joke about what Jane said she was going to do, to Jane it was putting her down. Mel did not think twice when she got home to a dark house. It was a little strange to her that only the front porch light was on, but figured that the wonderful Miss Daglow just called it an early night. Mel was looking forward to spooning with Jane as she crawled into bed. When the drunk husband put her arms around Jane, her wife woke up. Jane pushed Mel's arm off of her and as irate as a hornet said, Is the house clean enough for you? A confused Mel said, Huh? Your post on Facebook? Mel was too drunk to see the billboard-sized text coming from Jane to read that her wife was mad and she laughed. Oh yeah, that was funny. Maybe I will go and inspect it. You should and take your pillow with you because you are not sleeping in this bed tonight. Mel literally went to kiss and make up with Jane. Come on, it was a joke. Jane pulled away from Mel trying to show her affection to smooth out the rough feeling. It was not funny and I did not see it as a joke. Come on lighten up, it was about us reversing roles for a week. It was a joke. Women always have to take people joking that way towards them well, you meaning it as a joke does not change what the words mean. Also, a wife should never have to take a husband joking that way. At our age, friends should not even do it how you did. Teenagers, yeah, but you should be more mature than a teenager. Do not tell me you would not be pissed if I posted that if you stayed in. No, I would see it as a cute joke. Mel, that is a lie and you know it. Just get out of the bedroom, you are too drunk to talk about this. I am not leaving the bedroom, you always leave the bedroom if we fight before bed. That is for I was always the husband, or was this week a joke to you also? In a way, you treated it so. You try to get out of anything which I do as James which you did not like. I did this to show you I want to better understand the bad parts of being a female. So you know I am not downplaying who you are when I dressed. You are not taking it seriously for you cannot accept that I can take the good and the bad of others seeing and treating me as a female. You want to pull out that card whenever you think I am dressing too much. Mel knew that Jane was pissed at her and did not want to upset her wife anymore, so the drunken female husband left the bedroom. Going to the couch to sleep made Mel feel like the bigger person for she believed she was right about the joke. In her logic, which only worked for drunks and idiots, words lost their meaning if the users did not intend for them to be taken seriously. She forgot that there was no inflection or real-time interaction in the written word so the hints to not take them literal were not there also. That with word on paper being static, if a writer was not good at ensuring what they wrote came off as a joke, then they better treat it how the audience had. It was after 10 a.m. when Mel finally woke up from her drunken slumber. She had to think of why she slept on the couch last night. Then the fight came back to her. Her head started to throb even more when she remembered trying to defend that insensitive post as a joke. There would have been no fight if she would have just put herself in Jane's shoes. Her trying to cover up her offense by downplaying the gravity of it only made it worse. Then she thought of Jane's words, was Mel not taking the swap as serious as she should had? The lady with a turning stomach thought maybe. Mel knew the times she had actually put an effort into it this week were great. Jane was thriving this week and handling whatever came towards her for being a man in dress. Plus, Jane being out more gave the right kind of support Mel needed. Mel knew that how well she adapted to her new role at work would not have happened without Jane out full time. The lady who was successfully climbing the corporate ladder knew she would need that support for a while longer. Jane's support was great, it wasn't nurturing like Jane's, but laid back. No, from James, some of it was causally held back, and not as assertive as Jane. Thinking of the wife she had for only one more day, where was she? Jane was an early riser on the weekend and she had to be up. The lady who had some explaining to do did not want to find her wife, but knew she had to. She had to make last night right. Mel went into the kitchen and saw James sitting there drinking his coffee. Before Mel could start talking James did. I was wrong in suggesting what we did last week. I just wanted you to never pester me when I dressed as Jane. I did not think about if we would handle it badly. I should have known it would turn out bad, you married a husband and not a wife. 
You will not see Jane around here anymore for I am done dressing. It is just clothes, so I should not care so much about it. I would much rather have you in my life than Jane time. Mel did not like that Jane's voice sounded as tense as a guitar string which was strung too tightly. His body language was as tense as a tightrope which Mel felt like she was walking on. When Mel's husband got this way she would suggest that he had some Jane time. Now she did not know what to do to help ease how uptight he was. She wanted to show she did not want what he suggested and said, Jane this week is not over. I have one more day of you as my wife. Mel, it is over and do not call me Jane ever again. She is gone. You go upstairs and get some sleep. You look like hell. About last night. That was covered last night, it was a joke. You did not mean the words and I overreacted, so that is the end of it. Now, get some sleep. I will do the shopping then mow the grass. No, we need to talk about last night. You made yourself clear last night. The meaning of your words do not matter if you are joking and the other person does not know it is a joke. We did all the talking we needed in the last week. There was some good parts to last week but the bickering and little fights we had made it clear. There is no room for Jane in our relationship. I have a busy day ahead of me so I am going to get going. No, we need to talk. You need more Jane time and last week I found that I need it also. Jane is gone. I will adapt to it. It is just clothes which help me get into the right state of mind. I can do it without the clothes. The only thing you need Jane for is to get on me when I am expressing her too much. Now please drop the subject, I want to start the chores. Don't I have a say? You don't have a say on if I never will dress as Jane again. Anyways, with you complaining about me having too much Jane time, you already stated your opinion. Now I am going to cut the grass then go to the store. You don't cut the grass until tomorrow and I do the store on Saturday. Then while you work on the honey-do list I shop. The grass was not cut on Sunday, so it gets moved up today. You know that. You are in no shape to shop so I am moving the honey-do list to tomorrow. Now get some rest, maybe you will recover enough to salvage the evening. No, I was supposed to cut the grass on Sunday so I will do it. Jane deserves it. Mel trying to show she knew she messed up with how she handled some of the week caused James to snap. Damn it, I told you the switch is over. And don't talk about what Jane deserves. The swap was for a week. Yes, but it could end if one of us wanted it to and I do. Now let me start my day. James, can you please at least go to the store first? I really want some Gatorade and we are out of bath bombs at the Body Works. Part of Daglo's home remedy for a hangover was Gatorade. The Gatorade helped hydrate the body and also restore the electrolytes deficiency. The bath bomb was another part and most men would not understand the reasoning. James did for it was about liking how one looks. He knew how women will feel good by looking good from his Jane time. When asking for the bath bomb Melissa knew that was a perk of Jane she took for granted. Of course, I can my love. I am mad, but not at you but your actions. I am also mad at my actions. I should have never pushed for this swap. I know. Melissa was happy when James went to the store. She wanted to get rid of him. She gave up on the argument to start to make this right. Melissa knew the first part of James' statement was correct, but her husband was right for pushing for the swap. She took a shower quicker than a cult follower agreed with their leader and went to cut the grass. Cutting the grass was to show to Jane she wanted to take the swap seriously but did not realize she was not. Hopefully this gesture would open James up about talking about this week and also Jane. The lady who wanted to show her total support for her man would not press the subject. Then, as she cut the grass, her next-door neighbor Mike Tanner started to work in his backyard. She could not stand dealing with him. He was not an asshole, but the entire ass. When he opened his mouth a stupid comment would always fall out of it. Even with not liking to deal with him, the lady doing yard work turned off the lawnmower when he waved to her. It was the neighborly thing to do, to make small talk. Putting up with the loudmouth for a moment was worth it because he and his wife would watch the house for her and James when they went on vacation. Mike said, 
Hey there Melissa, so how do you like being the man of the house? Hearing that witless comment made Melissa wish she did not turn off the lawn mower and try to get Mike to drop the subject by being serious. I am helping James for he has done so much for me. Yeah like cleaning the house while you were out drinking. You should have him make you a sandwich when you got home also. Melissa felt as small as Mike's social grace hearing his second joke. Being cute on social media has made other people think they can make the same joke as she did. Mike, that is not funny. Come on, James thought it was funny when I made a sandwich joke. Don't joke like that about my husband. You better tell everyone on Facebook not to do so. After telling Mike to just don't joke about it Melissa started the mower up again. The humming of the engine did not nothing to drown out the voice in her head. She could just hear the last thing Mike told her. That throwaway joke was going to live on. Words have meaning and even when said in jest their true meaning resonated in them. After cutting the grass James has not made it home. Physically she was feeling better, the sweating must have sweated some of the toxins out of her system. Mentally, not so much. She needed to see how much more damage control was needed to be done for her throwaway joke. That joke was an attempt at being cute and being cute at her age was actually lame. When Melissa opened her Facebook and saw the post, she hated every single like. Then the comments drove the point of being cute was nothing more than a feeble attempt at being witty. All the humor in those posts depended on putting down her husband. It showed Melissa she was not thinking of her husband's feelings when she made the post. Melissa did not finish reading the replies when she deleted the post. James came home, and his loving wife came out to help him with the groceries. Even with the swap being over, Melissa was going to act how James did when she came home. The short, hi. James gave her was all the lady in her husband's bad graces needed to hear to know she was still in his doghouse. Every attempt Melissa made to start small talk was met with silence from her husband. Finally she said, aren't you going to say something? Yeah, what kind of sandwich do you want? The lady who wrote before she thought knew exactly why such a random question, that cute post. Melissa deleted the joke, but it was still around. They both knew people would still refer to it. I told that loudmouth not to joke like that again. Thank you for defending me, but don't do it. I can handle those stupid comments. Quit sulking about that post. I know it was wrong to do. Dear I am not sulking, this is James. This is the man you married without showing any of Jane to others. I will adapt and being able to show that side in time, but not now. Also, don't try to placate me by agreeing with me. We covered it last night, that post was only a joke. How you defended it last night made clear how you see it. You will not give me a chance to explain. You explained last night. I do not want to hear you try to sugarcoat how you've been acting anymore. You will try to put yourself in the best possible light and that will just lead to a huge fight. Come on James the first was drunk last night. See you are already trying to sugarcoat it. You did it and then did not see it as a big deal. You cannot just say that. Drop it. Well, I want to talk about it. Well, I do not. It takes both people to want to talk to have a conversation, so just drop it. Is this going to be how our marriage going to be, you dictating? Oh Melissa, I am not dictating, quit being a drama queen. I told you why I do not want to revisit a topic which we already talked about. Listen here you bullheaded man, I know that post was wrong. I know what was worse was my reaction to the post. I know I would have went off on you so bad if you made that post. I know I would be pissed off at everyone who made cute comments in reference to that post. I did not treat you how I would want to be treated. I know one thing, right now you are not the man I married. I thought I married James a man who was a cross-dresser. I saw the cross-dressing as a hobby which I did not like, but could put on with it for how wonderful that man is. I was wrong. I know how important Jane time is for you from this week. I know expressing Jane is a huge part of the person I married. I know taking her away is taking away a huge part of you. In the middle of Melissa was trying to set things right with James, he started to walk out of the kitchen. Don't walk away from me while I am talking. Melissa, 
I told you I do not want to talk about this. I have things to do today. Hopefully Bart comes over soon. Why is he coming over? Bart was the male side of Amanda, one of Jane's friends. Melissa did not like it when he or she came over. Amanda warned Jane that if she married Melissa that it would be the end of her. While he is my size, so I want to let him have first choice of my wardrobe before I take it to charity. Don't worry, he will not stay long, and I will make sure he knows that me getting rid of my clothes was me choice. You cannot purge your wardrobe. Yes, I can because Jane is gone. I am not dressing anymore. We are going to how it should be. Me being the husband and you being the wife. I should have quit dressing when we got serious. When Melissa heard about James going to purge tears started to form in her eyes. One tear snuck out her right eye like a grounded teenager. Her husband was getting rid of what made it easy for him to shine. She knew it was going to be a long and hard road for James to be able to be as open as he was now. I will get better at it. I know one thing I do not want to go back with you being the husband and me being the wife. I want to go to it being both of us being the husband and both of us being the wife. I am sorry. I was not a good husband. I was new at it. I want to get better at it for felt good. I love how good it felt when you picked where we ate on Friday. I actually liked getting rid of that spider for you. I love the smile on your face when I was actually being a good husband. I want that smile on your face as Jane. You were a good husband. I did not help by taking this too seriously. I also did not help by seeing the worse in your actions. We can talk about this more, but first I have something important to do. Call Amanda that bitch is not getting any of my clothes. I need to look my best when I am being the your wife. They both laugh at the catty joke and seeing Jane come back from her short exile put a smile on Mel's face. After the call, Melissa and James had a long talk. During that talk those two set the right cornerstone for them to have a more fluid relationship. A relationship where either of they both could shine as the husband and the wife when it was right. A relationship where they would both be the husband and both be the wife.